Okay, so what is the volume of this object? And I'm calling this an object because it doesn't look like an actual like cube or something else like that. It has a little bit of an unusual shape and there's no numbers, okay? So when we think of the volume, you wanna think of three dimensional, right? Because if we did, if we did have um, units of measure here, let's say feet, let's say this was feet and this was feet and this was feet, volume would ex be expressed in what? Feet cubed, okay? Whereas area is expressed in units squared. So like I would be like feet squared. So anytime you do have units of measure, like centimeters or feet or whatnot, make sure you put those things in because your teacher will not like uh, you, know, uh, you missing out on these units of measure. But just so you understand, volume is three-dimensional, as you can kind of see in my nice little sketch here. So what is the volume of this uh, figure? Well, we don't, again, have any numbers to work with, so we're going to have to use these algebraic expressions. So here is, let's say, uh, the length of this. There is the, uh, the width of this, and this would make, uh, be like the height. Okay, so uh, then we have some information up here that this is x, and this is x, and this is x. So this is enough information for you to come up with an algebraic expression of the volume of this figure, okay? So hopefully I gave you a pretty decent kind of um, setup in order for you to try the problem. I would definitely encourage you to try this. Put your answer into the comment section. It might be a little bit difficult because you can't you know, do all kinds of um, algebraic notations in the comment section, but do your best if you want to participate. Of course, I'm gonna uh, go through this step-by-step step in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in math, and I'm really directing this towards those of you out that are struggling in math. Please don't give up. You can do much, much better. But what uh, really um, what's required outside of your desire to want to do well in math is great math instruction, clear, understandable, comprehensive, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school or college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It will have a dramatic impact on your ability to learn and understand math. Also, if you are preparing for any sort of test with a math section, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I also have great homeschool courses that you might want to explore. And uh, if you don't have your own notes, and if you don't have your own notes, I'm gonna tell you right now, you need to start taking better notes or notes at all, because this is uh, one of the most uh, critical things for you to do to be successful in mathematics. But I'm gonna leave um, links to my math notes in the description of this video if you wanna check those out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps me out. Okay, so this is all the information you need to find the volume of this object, but let's go ahead and get into it right now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is give you the answer. Okay, here is the answer. And uh, you can kind of check your work, okay? Or if you don't wanna um, uh, watch the rest of the video, just pause the video and work on this and see if you can get this. I think that's a good way to go. Uh, but if you did get this already, well, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+. Plus, and uh, I'm going to give you uh, permission as your temporary teacher to leave this video and watch whatever you want on YouTube or TikTok or whatever you're going to do. Go enjoy yourself because you are pretty awesome in math. But if you didn't get this answer right, well, you're going to have to continue in my little mini math class here. So let's move on and figure this thing out. Okay, so... What uh, should we do? Well, we need kind of a plan here. And before I show you my work, let's just talk about the volume of anything. So uh, let's just uh, do a, like a little rectangular cu uh, cube, something like this, right? Like a shoebox, right? So if I was to find the volume of this, what you want to do is you want to calculate the area of the base. Okay, this would be like the base. So how can I do that? Well, this is the width and this is the height. The area of that, of the base, would just be the, the height times the width. Okay, there's a lot of different ways you can express this um, by a formula, but I'm just kind of giving you a kind of a general idea here. So you want to find the area of the base and then we want to multiply that by the length, okay? So this is kind of just the big picture way of finding volume for anything. And that goes for like something like a cylinder as well. So here's a nice little cylinder. 
So if I wanted to find the volume of this, I would find the um, area of the base, which of course would be a circle, and then I would multiply that by the height of the cylinder. So this is just a general kind of review of finding the volume of uh, very con common figures. All right, now let's just take a look at what we have here. You're like, well, how can I uh, possibly find the area of this thing? Well, let's just make our life easier, and let's just suppose that we'll just take this whole like uh, base and just think of this as a square, okay? So if this was a square or a rectangle, uh, to find the area of that, I would just take this and multiply it by that. That would give me the area of this whole thing, and then I can go ahead and multiply that by the length, this, and I would get really the uh, volume, okay, of this big thing right here, okay? But uh, here's the problem. That's not the volume of this object. I have to get, I have to address this part, this little like, you know, notch, right, that's going on here. So if I could find the, the volume of that, well, let's, maybe we could find the volume of this and subtract it away. So what would be the volume of this little notch thing right there? Well, you can see the dimensions of it, x, x, and x. So it's x wide, x um, high. So the area of that is x times x. That would be the area, and then we would just multiply it, I'm just kind of doing my little sketch here, by 2x plus 1, right? So this would be the volume of that little, uh, little notch thing. If we can subtract that away from the volume of this big thing, well, then we would have the volume of this object and that is going to be our game plan, okay? Now, if you think you understand this, you're like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. Well, let me go ahead and just show you a cleaner version of the problem. And again, here's the answer. Okay, so now I just gave you, you know, uh, the way to do this problem, but uh, there's a little bit of a twist here. You have to be very careful with your algebra, right? So if you want to kind of play around with this to see if you can get this answer, go ahead and do so, but I'm going to get into the actual solution now. Okay, so uh, one thing that you're going to want to always um, embrace in algebra Okay, when you're doing uh, problems like this or any other type of problems is your use of parentheses and brackets. Okay, I'm kind of cleaning up here my problem a bit here so we can kind of concentrate on the setup. So I'm not going to do any calculations yet. I'm just going to set this thing up as we discussed. So let's talk about how we would find the volume of just this big thing like this, right? This big object and then we'll get the little notch thing here in a second. So the volume of this is going to be what? Well, it's going to be th uh, this expression, 4x minus 2 times 3x times this, okay, 2x plus 1. So you can see this is what I have right here. So this is the volume of this big object, 3x times 4x minus 2 times 2x plus 1. Order doesn't make a difference when we talk about multiplication here. Now we're going to subtract um, we're going to take away from this the volume of this little notch thing. So remember, that's x times x, and then it's also 2x plus 1 long, okay? So x times x, of course, that would be x squared times 2x plus 1, but we have to subtract this. And I'm telling you right now, this is where a lot of students will get this uh, incorrect. Use brackets because now we have this little negative sign. Anytime you're dealing with subtraction in algebra, you have to be extra, extra on alert, okay, because you have to be careful with this uh, distributing this negative sign. A lot of students will forget how to do that because they're not using brackets. So set your problem up using grouping symbols, brackets. Uh, it will keep you out of trouble, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just one second. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the algebra. So we have 3x times 4x minus 2 times 2x plus 1. So I'm going to go to multiply these binomials together here using the FOIL method. Okay, if you don't understand any of this, uh, if you're struggling, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel, other algebra topics. Uh, but I would say this kind of stuff that I'm doing here is really kind of like algebra one stuff. So that would be my recommended course to you. But here I'm going to go 4x times 2x. That gives me 8x squared. Then 4x times this one is a positive 4x. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x, and negative 2 times that 1 is negative 2. You can see that my x is here. My 4x and negative 4x is going to cross cancel. So I'm left with 8x squared minus 2. So let's put that there. Then we'll multiply this thing by 3x. Okay, so now let's go over here and address what's going on in this bracket. 
So x times x is the same thing as x squared, all right? And then we're going to go and use the distributive property. x squared times 2x gives me 2x cubed. Got to be very careful with those x squareds and x, and then x squared times 1 is x squared, okay? So again, notice I'm keeping this in brackets. I haven't, here I was able to take this thing out of the bracket, and I'm just telling you right now, uh, when you're subtracting, especially the expression to the right of the uh, subtraction uh, operator, keep that in brackets, okay? All right, so now let's go and see um, what the next step is. So I have 3x times 8x squared minus 2. Let's go ahead and use the distributive property here. So 3x times 8x squared will give us 24x cubed. 3x times this negative 2, negative 6x. Now, what I need to do here with this negative sign is this is like a negative one. This is the distributive property. So this is going to be negative one or negative times this negative two x cubed. So that's negative two x cubed. And then this negative gets distributed to this x squared. So many students will forget to do this and it will get their problem wrong. Maybe uh, a lot of you out there watching this video said, oh, that's where I made my mistake. Well, it's this negative also gets distributed to this x squared. So that's negative x squared. All right, so now we can go ahead and combine like terms. So I have a 24x cubed and I have a negative 2x cubed that gives me 22x cubed, okay? And you always want to watch your, uh, want to write your powers, or sorry, write, write your answers highest to lowest power because this is a polynomial expression. So always write it in standard form, highest to lowest power. So what's next? Well, oh, x squared. So I only have uh, one x squared term, so that's negative x squared. And I only have one linear factor or one linear term. That's x, negative 6x. So I'll write that there. And this is the final answer. Okay, this would be the volume of that um, object expressed as a polynomial. Okay, so again, if you got this right, well, not only, matter of fact, I'm going to give you an A++, a 120% in multiple stars uh, if you were able to actually just even do this problem. Okay, even... If you didn't get the answer right, you know, immediately after a few hints, you were like able to do this. That's very, very good. Okay. So nice job. But uh, for those of you that are kind of lost here, you need to ask yourself, well, what are you struggling with? Maybe it's um, uh, the concept of volume. Maybe it's multiplying uh, polynomials. You know, whatever the case is, you know, you need to work on this because this is a nice little uh, algebra problem. You're definitely going to see things like this on tests and quizzes and all sorts of tests um, out there, standardized tests beyond school. So don't think that, oh, this is just some crazy problem I'll never run into. No, if you're taking a mathematics, mathematics course, you're definitely going to run into a problem, something like this. And hopefully this little video has helped you out to prepare so you can ace and get like these awesome test scores, like 100% uh, percent on your quizzes and tests. That's what my channel is all about. Uh, so if this video helps you out again, don't forget to like and subscribe and if you need any more additional help Check out all my math courses pick the one that is right for you I have my most basic course with this which is my math foundations course Which goes over like arithmetic and then I have all sorts of various levels of algebra geometry and pre-calculus So pick what uh, course you are currently studying and don't try to um, uh, you know, do uh, a math course beyond your current math skills, because then you're going to set, your, set yourself up for failure. So you want to just kind of build your skills up one set, uh, one step at a time and one course at a time. Okay, don't try to go from pre-algebra all the way up to pre-calculus. There's a lot you need to learn in between. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.